man, there's so many ways I want to go with this because another thing that I'm I've personally always been drawn to is the idea of panpsychism, the idea that there is a certain amount of consciousness that is either just built in to existence or depending on the flavor or maybe extremity of panpsychism that consciousness precedes you know physical evolution precedes brains and things like that and i know you do address these things in the book but why is it mutually exclusive that in, in your opinion that consciousness is something that must be evolving alongside matter alongside uh evolution rather than before yeah so this is a trip tricky topic because um so let's say you did imagine that there was this consciousness before and it mm -hmm. kind of gives rise to that process um that consciousness itself uh needs to be explained and can potentially also be explained by uh, an evolutionary process that leads to open-ended complexity and knowledge growth. So, um, you know, in the book, I do make this argument that we don't need any, you know, supernatural forces to explain this story. It's actually a completely mechanistic story, but, um, uh, we do have to ask the question about the fine tuning of the parameters right. mm -hmm. that lead mm -hmm. to this complexity. So I'm saying that it's okay to, you know, ask these larger questions about why the universe is the way it is. But even if we have answers such that, you know, we try to propose that there's some intelligent agent that is responsible for it, we have to explain that agent's origins as well. So maybe we need to expand our conception of reality. And once we do that, then, and this is, you know, getting a, a bit ahead of myself, but um, uh, a simulation theory in my mind is functionally equivalent to um, a sort of like uh, intelligent creator theory. Right. Because both of them are proposing that there that this universe is something that has this design or that it's a program that was created by a prior intelligence. So um, I'm not necessarily, you know, um, saying that, you know, some of these larger ideas that someone could come up with aren't true, um, but that it's still part of a natural worldview and we'll just have to expand our definition of what we consider to be natural. Um, at the same time, uh, if we're looking at the evolutionary processes that I argue in the book lead not only inevitably to life, the origin of life, the emergence of life, but uh, to increasing intelligence, uh, then we see that this is an intelligible process that um, we can understand, that we can formalize, and I think, um, you know, once we see the big picture, uh, we, it kind of changes our perspective on our place, uh, our relationship to the cosmos. We no longer see ourselves as these sort of cosmic accidents. We see ourselves as an essential driver of this complexity increased process. And I think that gives purpose and meaning to life. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. It really does. And I mean, I I want to get more into this question of consciousness just because it's a it's a huge interest of mine, but also I feel tempted to to meander in another direction too, which is that if what you're proposing is true and we walk through it as a thought experiment and we look at where consciousness is now compared to where it was when the universe began, and we assume that that continues on for millions or billions more years, we're just going to get denser, more complex, richer forms of consciousness until perhaps we reach an omega point of consciousness, right? Like some ultimate form of consciousness. And immediately, of course, like the Terrence McKenna lectures start playing in my brain and 
all of the, uh, you know, the, the riffs about strange attractors and the transcendent <laughs> object at the end of time and all the, you know, all these things. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. And, um, and then, I mean, the, the question kind of becomes, haven't we just asynchronously created God then, or a divine, divine mind, or like a nous, that would sort of be pulling us toward it like a kind of destiny, like where where we're we're entangled with this omega point already being pulled toward it like an attractor, where in in some strange way, in some kind of loop, it's created itself, but is forcing us toward it. So are are you just are you just trying to Trojan horse future now <laughs> future God mind, Bobby? <laughs> so so whether this process leads to something like this cosmic mind or this cosmic omega point, uh, I'm not sure, but it seems to be the logical conclusion of the process. Um, and I think that's kind of like one of the, the biggest ideas anyone could have is that we're this kind of stepping stone on the way uh, to the mind of God. And um, so language gets a little bit tricky. Uh, you were asking about, you know, consciousness and there's this discussion of whether it's fun fundamental or whether it's emergent. Consciousness isn't something simple for a system to have or create. Uh, and so while, you know, panpsychism is a really cool idea and I think in some ways it could be right or illuminating, um, I don't think uh, I think it kind of reduces consciousness to something trivial by saying like a mm. rock has it or an atom has it. I think it's more interesting if you have this uh, evolutionary process that inevitably leads to the emergence of consciousness. Um, and I think uh, consciousness is something that a system constructs after it's acquired information about the world around it. It creates this sort of virtual representation of the world that it's embedded in. Mm -hmm. And so the reason I say language gets tricky is because um, I'm arguing that consciousness is emergent, but I'm also arguing that it's baked into this process. So right. in some ways, it's still fundamental um, because it necessarily must give rise to consciousness. Um, so I think this debate over whether it's emergent and fundamental can, you know, be a kind of trap because something that's emergent, but that's sort of the, you know, baked into this larger process, uh, would be fundamental. It would be sort of the goal of this, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, consciousness does seem to be fundamental in the sense that the universe seems to be waking up through sentient agents that it produces through something like an evolutionary algorithm and that there's this program or building plan that the evolution of the universe follows that leads to sentient agents and maybe even a conscious cosmos. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of yeah, implications that can come <laughs> from that. Yeah. And, you know, um, but the book, and I do make some speculations at the end, but, uh, the book's focus is more on um, articulating this argument that this increase in complexity is inevitable and understandable. 